Hello and welcome back to my channel and today I'm counting down my top 10 ZX Spectrum games and I'm also going to be announcing my wild card, my nomination for the most underrated ZX Spectrum game of all time. Yes, I was a ZX Spectrum guy, not Commodore, not Amstrad, not Atari. I loved Clive Sinclair's Spectrum. I had that 48K with the lovely squidgy keys. I never used a joystick because I loved the keys. Then I graduated up to a 1 to 8K with its fantastic music. And recently, actually, they produced this modern style game console that you can plug into your TV, which is, has got the similar appearance of a Spectrum. You can play Spectrum games on it. It's not quite the same, but I quite liked it. Now, for years during the 80s, I wrote down all the games I bought in these two little faded notebooks. I've kept them all these years. And I put together my top 10 list from these notebooks. So let's get into the list. At number 10 is Time Scanner by Activision. Now, this might seem a strange game to put into my top 10, but it was the first time I'd come across a pinball simulator. I'm a huge fan of pinball. I used to play a lot of it when I was at university. And this was the first pinball simulator I came across that, where the movement of the ball actually felt right. And I was quite impressed by that. And you had four tables to play on, and one of them had a volcano in it where the ball shot out. And so I really loved it. I used to play this game for hours. It was also quite easy to complete, which I quite liked. So Time Scanner is my number 10. I wonder if anyone else remembers that game. At number 9 is Nebulous by Houston Consultants. This is where you play this kind of little pog character. And he's climbing up the steps. It's like a platform game of these towers that rotate on screen as you're going around them. And um, you have to get to the top and blow up the tower. And then you go in a little submarine to the next tower. Um, I thought the graphics on this game were fantastic. I thought the gameplay was great. I was always a big platform game fan. Um, so this is one of my personal favourites. Now, at number eight, uh, and I've purely picked this really for the music, the 1 to 8K music, which is my favourite music score in any uh, Spectrum game, or in any computer game, actually, is Robocop. And if you remember, the music at the start is this, it's very sort of melancholy piece. I'm going to provide a link at the bottom to the Game Boy version of it, which is my favourite version of that music. It's so good. I actually think the other great piece of music from the 1 to 8K Spectrum was DEFCOM, which I'll also provide a link to. Great piece of music. Robocop itself, the game, based on the movie, of course, was incredibly difficult. I remember it took me ages to get through the first stage. You know, you, you've got your gun, and you have to keep kneeling and then shooting up and then kneeling and moving forward. And you had to be very precise in your shooting. Um, it's a very difficult game. Quite enjoyable, but God, it was hard work. Seventh place, I wonder if anyone remembers Batman the Caped Crusader by Ocean. Now, this game, there was lots of different Batman games. One looked a bit like Night Law, which we'll talk about Night Law in a moment. But this one was, there was two stories, A Bird in the Hand and something, there was a play on words to do with fate, a fate worse than death, that's right. And the first one involved the Penguin and the second one involved the Joker. And the graphics were like, you know, um, comic strip cutouts and scenes. Um, and it had a wonderfully oppressive atmosphere. And I really enjoyed playing it. It was halfway between an adventure game and a, and a sort of platform game. And uh, I thought this was one of the best uh, ocean games, one of the best uh, Spectrum games. But it doesn't seem to be very well remembered. I wonder if anyone else out there played it. I used to love it. Now, sixth place is Splitting Images. This came out in about 85. And they totally took their title from Splitting Images, the TV series. And what it is, it's a weird variant on those kind of tile games you used to play, where you have to move the tiles around to get everything in order. Um, done as a computer game. Now, that might make it sound a bit dull. Actually, it was great fun. And it was quite funny. that You used to make up pictures of Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher and... Charles and Diana. And then what you would do is you'd, you'd put in the tiles and sometimes you'd have a, a bomb that would blow everything up. Sometimes you'd have different elements like a Russian flag and an American flag would sort of cancel each other out and you'd get points and things like that. It was a really entertaining game to play. Very well designed, I thought. Um, I wonder if anyone else remembers playing that. I thought it was brilliant, actually. Fifth place, this is my one adventure game in the list. I wasn't that keen on text-based adventure games. I used to find them a bit frustrating, you know. I could never 
work out the right command to say. My favourite, though, was a little low-budget uh, release from Firebird. Do you remember Firebird? They used to release games for about two quid each. And one was called Subsunk. And Subsunk, you were trapped on a submarine. It was an unusual location for a game. And you're completely on your own on this submarine. you just got to work how to get out. And it was really well written and put together. And it was quite witty. The, the, way, the way you had to, you know, you had to use toast scrapings to make glue, you know. And, and um, you had to send up a, 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 a sort of balloon out of the torpedo tubes and things like this. It was really cleverly written. And it's one of the few adventure games I went through right to the end because I was enjoying playing it so much. They also did a very good sequel to it called Sea Base Delta where you're on a sea base under the sea and you have to sort of uh, work out what's going on, again, completely on your own. I enjoyed that one as well. I thought these were really good low-budget games, what the, what the Spectrum did best, I think. Fourth place, uh, another Firebird release, Bubble Bobble. This was a very famous um, Japanese-written uh, game, arcade game, which transferred to the Spectrum. And... Um, Again, as I say, I love platform games. And Bubble Bobble was such great fun. You played this little dragon, and he sort of spit bubbles out of his mouth. And then the, the baddies would be encased in the bubbles, and you pop them and get points or food or something. And I just found this, the gameplay was so easy. You know, you just jumped around really easily, and I really loved it. And then later they released a brilliant sequel to it called Rainbow Islands, where instead of bubbles, you threw rainbows that could kill people, and you could jump on them as platforms. I used to play those two games endlessly. I thought they were completely brilliant. In third place, Nightmore. One of the great classics of Spectrum Gaming. I know that many of you are expecting this um, Elite or the Sentinel. I found those two games a bit too difficult for me. But Nightmore, this is a beautiful game that I think anyone who played on the Spectrum loved. It was a three-dimensional platform game. So instead of the sort of two dimensions that you, you know, you're jumping up and down like that, you, you went into a three dimensional room and you could walk around in each direction and jump on blocks. And one of the, the, the delights of this game was that you're this guy who turns into a werewolf and you can see the little sun and moon in the corner of the screen going round. And every time the moon comes round, you would change into a werewolf, sometimes mid jump, which would then kill you, which was really annoying. And then you'd go into these little rooms and there'd be a cauldron and it would say what item you'd put in the cauldron to make up the potion to stop this werewolf curse. The graphics of their time were inspired. Ultimate, who made it, made so many variations of it. They were a bit naughty, really. Alienate and all these other movie, all these other computer games where they copied the graphics completely. But Night Law was the original and it was a fantastic game. I think a real step forward for uh, the Spectrum. And number two, now this is a bit of a personal choice that many people might not remember. It was a game called Killed Until Dead, and it was released by US Gold. And what it was, it was a murder mystery, a bit like Knives Out, you know, where you were Hercule Holmes, I think you were called. You were a murder mystery detective. And there were all these murder mystery writers, and each time you played the game, one of those writers had killed another, and you had to work it out by looking at clues, going to places, and interviewing the suspects. And at first, the game seemed very complicated, and you, didn't, you couldn't work out how you were going to get through it. But after a while, I learnt the trick of the game. And once you'd learnt the trick, it was quite easy to complete. But it was great fun. You know, it was very witty. It was very cleverly designed, I think. Uh, one of the best designed Spectrum games. And I used to have hours of fun playing that game. It re re recreated the world of the sort of Agatha Christie who done it really well, with good graphics and a good sense of humour. And now we come to my number one. Now, I don't think anyone else would pick this game as their number one Spectrum game. So bear with me here. My number one Spectrum game is Dynamite Dan 2. Dynamite Dan, the original, is quite a famous platform game, and it was notoriously difficult. It was also very famous for its music, the guy who uh, designed it was a musician, and he put in all little snatches of classical music. In Dynamite Dan 2, he extends that, so Dr. Blitzen, the enemy, is trying to send subliminal messages in records. So you have to go ac across these different islands. You find the record, you put it in the jukebox and play it, and it's a piece of beautiful piece of classical music, and then you move on to the next island, 
Why? I don't know. What I loved about this game, I think the design on this game is brilliant. Each of the islands is really distinctive. So you start in a sort of industrial island with all sorts of gas pipes and cylinders. Then you go to a sort of voodoo island with lots of caves and, you know, secret passages. Then you go to an Egyptian island and so on and so forth. And one island is like a great big dragon boat, a great big sort of Chinese dragon boat. And it's a, the gameplay is really great. And each island has three distinct items that you can use and you have to work out what they're for. And each island has distinctive baddies who are all, you know, different colours will steal different things from you and they'll move in different ways. It's just a perfect platform game. I used to play it for hours. Again, one of the very few Spectrum games that I could be bothered to complete to the end. I used to get a bit frustrated with most games. But Dynamite Dan 2 I used to play for hours and I did complete it several times actually. A really good, fun game. I loved it to pieces. Is there anyone else out there who liked Dynamite Dan 2 as much as I did? I'd love to hear from you. Now I promised you at the end of this list my wild card and my wild card is Amarot by Mastertronic. Amarot, Mastertronic were another, like Firebird, they were a low budget. You get these games for two quid and it was absolutely incredible. It was an incredible game where you're in this kind of like sim style world, this massive landscape with farms and industrial complexes and all the rest of it. And you moved around in this kind of spider vehicle and you had to kill these giant insects um, with very well aimed bombs. It took me ages to get the handle of aiming the bombs at these insects. It was so satisfying when you killed one. And sometimes, you know, you just spent hours walking around this landscape killing insects. You know, you you forgot the gameplay. You were just enjoying yourself discovering this huge landscape for a Spectrum game. It was really impressive. The graphics were brilliant. I also liked the 1 to 8K music, which was very moody <laughs> um, and strange. I'll give you a link to that um, below. So that's my wild card. That's my most underrated Spectrum game of all time. So that's my list. Uh, let me know your list. I'd love to hear of games that I've missed out. I know I missed out Elite. I know I missed out Sentinel. I know I missed out Operation Wolf. I probably should have chosen those. But these are the games that I played most often and which I really, really loved. Also, Way of the Exploding Fist. Do you remember that? That was a good uh, punch em up Yeah. So anyway, I love the Spectrum. I'd love to hear from fellow Spectrum lovers. Thanks very much. <laughs>